in this video, we're going to be testing out Intel's most powerful iGPU. Now, I've got a mini PC with this chipset, and unfortunately, I can't do a full review on it just yet. The embargo has been pushed back a couple weeks, but I've been sitting on it for a couple weeks already, so I wanted to get something out of the way because the performance this thing's putting out is pretty amazing for Intel Arc-based integrated graphics. What we're going to be testing out here today is the Intel Arc 140T. This is different from the 140V that's in the lower end chip. This is actually paired up with their H series 200 chips and it is putting down better performance than the 140V, but it's not based on the XE2 cores like the 140V. This is actually based on XE cores with XMX. Basically, this is paired up with a more powerful CPU. It's got a higher clock and it can really kind of put the performance down when it needs it. So jumping right in here, a few things that I wanted to show you. We've got that Intel Arc 140T. Now, while uh, you can see down here that it can allocate up to 18 gigs of system memory for VRAM. And with this, our RAM is running at 8,400 megatransfers per second. In the past, when this initially released, I did test it in a lower end chip, but we didn't have that fast RAM. We were kind of stuck with SODIMM RAM up to 5,600. Going from 5,600 up to this LP DDR5X at 8,400 megatransfers per second does make a huge difference. And the whole package is the Intel Core Ultra 9 285H. So we've got 16 cores, 16 threads. And again, the 140T is much different from the 140V. With that, it's actually based on XE2 cores. This isn't based on XE2, but it's paired up with a more powerful CPU. This way, we can really let this iGPU's legs stretch. And given that we have that much faster RAM, we should see some pretty amazing performance here for an Intel iGPU. I'm on the latest Arc driver, and something new that I've noticed with most of these iGPUs in the market getting, uh, you know, this new Intel graphics software. If we go to graphics here, we've got the shared GPU memory override. In the past, I've seen when starting up a game with these Arc iGPUs, the game doesn't really know how much RAM you have because it's kind of allocated on the fly. So sometimes it'll say, hey, this is incompatible. You've only got one gig of RAM when in all actuality, we've got much more than that. I'm going to leave this off. But from here, we can do up to 27.5. A little much there. I've got a 32 gig system. I'd say 12 would be great. But since we're going to leave it off, it can do up to 18 and possibly even further if we need it. But I don't think we're going to need it there. Another thing that's been implemented with a couple new games is uh, Intel's XESS Frame Gen which is pretty awesome. I mean, it really does work amazingly on this chip and even the 140V. And with this, you can pair it up with XE low latency. So you get minimal input latency, even with frame generation on. I think they're going in the right direction here. I just wish it would speed up a bit and we could get it to more games sooner. And one really important thing here is with this 285H, it can boost up to 110 watts in this system, but we're not going to be running it at 110 watts. I've got it set at a static 65 watt TDP, and even then, with most of the games, we don't need to do 65 watts. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and move over to some benchmarks that I ran on this system, and then we'll get right into some gaming. When it comes to benchmarks, first one I ran was the Geekbench OpenCL benchmark, and obviously at the top we've got the Intel Arc 140T. We scored a 40,891. I also wanted to put this up against the Radeon 890M, now keep in mind, this comes in the Ryzen AI HX370. It's got 16 compute units. And over there, at a 65 watt TDP, we were up a little over 37,000. So not that far off, but obviously the 140T is coming ahead here. Next up, we've got 3D Mark Time Spy. And on this 140T, we got a pretty impressive score of 4,833. So when it comes to Intel-based iGPUs, this is the highest score that I've seen. And again, I tested it against that HX370 at a 65 watt TDP. Over there, we had a total score of 4,038. And if you take a look at the graphics score here, with that 140T, we're at 4,348. And on that 890M, we're at 3,649. So when it comes down to it, at least with these synthetic benchmarks, this 140T is coming ahead. But that's kind of been the case with these Arc iGPUs. We've seen really good synthetic scores out of a lot of them, but then when it comes to real-world performance, some of them don't perform as well as we thought they would. 
The first game we have here is Cyberpunk 2077. We're at 1080p using that high preset. And with the high preset, it does automatically set XCSS to quality. So we've got a little bit of scaling here, but we're at high settings on an iGPU. Not too bad. I mean, we're not hitting 60 FPS with it in some spots it does. On average, we're seeing around 56 FPS. In the top left-hand corner, we do have Afterburner running, and you can see we're not at 65 watts here. It's pulling around 56 watts. Jumps up a little bit every once in a while. But with the latest update, the Cyberpunk, we do get XCSS frame generation and XELL, so the XCSS low latency mode. With that enabled, still at 1080p, high settings, frame gen on, we're seeing over 80 FPS on average, and it is really smooth here. I've been doing a lot of testing with uh, Intel Arc dedicated GPUs and their new frame gen technology. It's been coming to more games and I really do like what they're doing here. Next up, Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered. 1080p, medium, XESS set to balanced. And to tell you the truth, if I go down the low settings with XESS at performance, we're not seeing much more out of it. So dropping the resolution would be the way to go, but I wanted to test out FSR frame gen on this setup. Now, unfortunately, we don't have that XESS frame gen, but the FSR version does work with this setup here, and it does take us up a little over 70 FPS on average. Overall, not too bad, but this game has been really hard on every iGPU that I test it with. Uh, usually dropping it down to 900p is where you really need to be with something like this. Checking out Shadow of the Tomb Raider, just using the built-in benchmark. This is one that I run on all of these iGPUs. We're at 1080p medium, and on something like the 890M, at 65 watts, I can get an average of around 71. We're up to 76 on this setup, so not a huge jump, but it is coming ahead there. Here's Borderlands 3, we're at 1080p, medium settings, and I will tell you that I played through this for a little while because this game on an iGPU can really be all over the place when caching all of the new shaders, especially uh, when it comes to new weapon particles. But once that was out of the way, pretty steady here, getting an average of 74 FPS across the board. But just keep in mind, I mean, when starting this game up, it's gonna fall on its face every once in a while with those new particles. I did test out God of War Ragnarok, 1080p, had to drop it to low with XCSS set to balanced. Going to 900p with these same settings will net us actually a little more up in the mid 80s with it, but with the setup I'm using here, no frame gen, 67 FPS on average. Checking out Elden Ring, 1080 high settings, and with this we don't have any extra scaling unless you wanna use like a third party scaling app but this did hold pretty steady. With the FPS counter in the top left hand corner, you'll see it drop down to 59 every once in a while, but that's as low as it went. And if that wasn't on screen, I mean, I wouldn't even notice it. It's fully playable here. And I did test maximum settings, but that'll drop us down to an average of around 52. And finally, you knew I had to test it here, Forza Horizon 5. Now, most of the time, when I'm running this on an iGPU, like even the 890M, we're at medium settings, seeing around 90 FPS on average. With this, we're at 1080 high, no scaling whatsoever, and we could throw a little bit of XCSS at it if we wanted to, 84 FPS on average. I know that this isn't the hardest game to run, but it's one I always like to test on these iGPUs, and I think this setup is handling it just fine. So overall, this 140T is trucking right along. I kind of wish they would have added those XE2 cores here with this setup, but we've got those XMX engines, and the 140T is the only one they pair up with these higher-end CPUs. With something like the 140V, you can get eight cores and eight threads, and I'll tell you, in some cases, you just need a few more cores or a higher clock with that chip. But with this, I mean, we've got more than enough CPU performance, even just at 65 watts, which I mentioned we can boost up higher than that if we need to. But at 65 watts, it does separate the power just enough to give us the maximum clocks on that iGPU, which is something we really want to see out of this setup. So for an Intel Arc-based iGPU, yeah, this is the best performance that I've seen so far. But if you were to compare this to something like the Radeon 8060S with those 40 CEUs, I mean, this thing has nothing on that chip. 
So in the future, I'd love to see Intel put something a bit more beefy in a chip like this. I mean, having more XE cores would really help out, but you'd need a bigger cooling system. Going from a mini PC with just a larger cooler would be totally okay as long as we can at least do 1080p across the board with, you know, everything we want to throw at it. I do think it's possible, and in the future, it's something we may see from them. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I will have a full review on the setup that we're using right now. Just keep an eye out on the channel. have to wait a little while for that. In that video, we will boost this thing up and see exactly what we can do. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.